so um, today we uh, we have a number of uh, we have Melvin here, uh, the winner of first leg of the series. We have Irina, the fourth in the Protos, and we have Christian, which is uh, second in the series. And uh, we have a lot of discussions around the world, I think, about the uh, decisions around uh, Cap Finisterre. And just to introduce Cap Finisterre, it's a place, it's a northwestern corner of uh, Spain. And it's a very famous place for uh, uh, bad weather and a very bad sea state. And in case uh, shit happens, this is the worst place you can be at. So this is the background for this, and uh, there was uh, the entire fleet of the uh, Mini Transat. The first leg goes from the Sabdelon across the Bay of Biscay and then down along the coast of Portugal down to the Canaries, to La Palma. So uh, for a lot of boats, uh, they were in the shitty place when the shit happened. And uh, then uh, let's see what uh, we have uh, Melvin here who didn't stop at all. And uh, Christian, you stopped for a while and uh, you had uh, good reasons for that. So let's say, uh, Melvin, what, uh, what was the information that you had uh, when you took your decision and how, how did it look like from your point of view? Uh, yeah, we were, it was the 1st October and we already passed Cap Finisterre and were to go out of the, of the zone of Cap Finisterre. And um, we got the information in the morning about the storm, storm warning, about the storm front, uh, cold front, which will arrive on the 2nd at night. So. 36 hours after um, the, the message we got and we yeah the race committee told us to maybe to take a shelter in, in, in the harbor or to go out of the zone the, we have meteorologic zone in the in the in the um, race and there were two zones Cap Venice North and um, Sud uh, which were where the storm will be with 50 knots and uh, four and a half meters of waves and um, after this zone, the zone uh, Porto, which is along the Portuguese coast, um, was yeah, it was not so strong. It was the forecast was uh, 30, 30 knots of wind and three meters of waves. And yeah, we got this um, this message, and then a lot of people dis directly decided uh, to go into the harbor. And there was a lot of there was a big mess on the VHF. A lot of French-speaking people, a bit was uh, translated to English, but the most was in French and. Yeah, we or I could understand that. Yeah, a lot of people are going into the harbor and found some some to, to find some shelter, but um, there was no the race committee. We were not forced to go into the harbor. So I, me and Le uh, me and um, Christian, we talked about the weather situation, and our first feeling was to continue at first and to to wait for uh, uh, for new weather forecast and just go south as possible and uh, wait for the next um, weather forecast, which will come uh, come at uh, 15, so at 3 o'clock UTC, in around yeah, six hours after the, the warning from the um, from the tracker. It was a message on the tracker, which we got. And um, before, a lot of people went already in the harbor, but we, yeah, we decided to stay outside, and we got the new um, weather forecast, which says that yeah, it will be the hot uh, weather in, in, in Cap Finisterre, but not in uh, Porto. So we went in the zone of Porto and um, then uh, 24 hours after, on the 2nd, I, we also got um, the weather forecast again and it was the same. The weather was the same and then I decided to stay outside, to go out of the coast, to be uh, 30 to 40 miles um, away from the coast and um, take the front and yeah, it was fine, it was not so strong, and it, <laughs> all right, and that's the story. <laughs> uh, I was uh, on a proto uh, much in front because we could pass uh, Cap Finisterre with a good uh, wind with us, uh, and uh, of course I hear the same uh, warnings on the radio, and it was um, very interesting to, yeah, very interesting <laughs> to see who um, will go to shelter and who will stay uh, because uh, fleet uh, was not in a one spot fleet was separated in different uh, meteorological zone and uh, based on forecast as much you progress to the south the uh, weaker is a cold front and uh, later it arrives so as much you go down the more time you get and more safe you are 
So, Christian, I think you had uh, the same opinion. This is why you decided to wait until uh, <laughs> next day <laughs> before you take decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Like uh, Marvin already said, um, there was quite a confusion on the radio and um, was translated uh, from Hugo, for example. He said, um, yeah, there will be or they're ne negotiating with the race committee to make a new start in, in around Vigo area. Uh, then it was like cancelled again, saying no, the race goes on. So we actually don't really have proper information, and we didn't get all the French stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, so we we kept on going, and um, the further south, as you say, the better it will be. And uh, Mary was really cool. He already had prepared the distance to the next meteorological area, which was Porto. It was 38 miles, so it was for us an option to go to stay on and and uh, continue on the coast. Uh, for me, it was not very lucky because uh, just after our discussion, what to do, and Marvin said, you want to continue? I said, okay, let's do it. Uh, I had a complete blackout, so <laughs> I had no, no VHF, no depth sounder, no light, no nothing, so it was really fucked up. <laughs> and, um, but you meant that uh, you meant your electricity, you were out of electricity on the Yes, boat. completely flat okay. batteries. So your charging was No, good. yeah, it was like at the beginning of the night and no charging, and you, you know that you have 24 hours, or you have 12 hours on a tiller until the sun goes up again and, and charging us your panels. Uh, so for me, it was no option to continue, uh, but I want to go to the next uh, possible harbor, which was Bayonne, uh, mm -hmm. the harbor where all the other, or a lot of other minis uh, went. Uh, but for me, I arrived there at two o'clock in the morning, so it was too dark. It was, I didn't know the harbor, so it was too risky for, us to go, too risky for me to go in. And I decided to go to the next port, which was um, uh, about 35 miles south in, in an industrial harbor. And I got traded for 15 hours there, and uh, then I continued as soon as possible. So, but yeah, there was no no rush in time. It was 36 hours uh, when we got the first warning to the front. So, it was uh, plenty of time to make a proper decision uh, what to do. And uh, for you, you uh, also had a broken wind sensor at that time. <laughs> so it was not only blackout; it was broken wind sensor. What else? Uh, so just. Just little things. Uh, a block was broken on the mainsail. Uh, the mainsail came off the mast track a little bit, so. but no, nothing really serious. And uh, your boat, Melvin, uh, was in a perfect condition. So for you, it was pretty safe to take a front, uh, to take not any front, but <laughs> especially this one. Uh, yeah, my boat was in perfect condition and nothing breaks. And I had yeah, around 24 hours, more than 24 hours to prepare my boat for the situation. Mm -hmm. So I weaved very early, I saved all my solar panels, I, I saved my bow by a bow speed and uh, did a lot of things to prepare the boat for the strong wind and of course I would never go into the 50 knots at Cap Finisterre when I don't have to, but the 30 knots in average which were expected for um, Porto were absolutely um, okay. I was thinking about my uh, storm jib if I should install it, mm -hmm. but I thought so the only re f thing for me was because a lot of people were in the harbor. But at this moment, I thought that probably the top five to top ten will is also still outside because it's just what was for me just logical because not so much wind, 30 knots of wind is not a lot. Um, we have always, uh, we ha it's not <laughs> the first time that we have this wind. And so the only thing which was speaking against uh, my decision was that so many people were in the harbor. And that was the only thing for me. And so I decided to not take the storm jib because 30 knots of wind with a third reef in the main and mm -hmm. one in the jib, it's okay. And in the end, it wasn't the wind, it's just the wave and three meters of waves, okay. It's f against, it's not so nice, but when you find a good rhythm, it's okay. <laughs> and there was absolutely no problem in this wind. Uh, can you say that the decision that you take uh, shall be based on uh, many factors? It's not only the wind and it's not only sea state, but it's also condition and state of your boat and uh, your probably moral, mm, your own, condition. Uh, your own yeah, moral yeah. condition uh, if you are ready, let's say ready to meet it or not. So it's like a very complex uh, decision and uh, each skipper uh, probably have to take uh, this decision by himself, uh, regardless on, uh, of decisions of ours. 
Absolutely, yeah. I think it's a combination of things. And when you're in good state, and you told me on the radio you're in good condition, you feel good, your body is good, so why shouldn't you face the front with 30 knots, which we did a couple of times already in other races? The first front was, that, that was the hard front. There were 30, 35 knots mm -hmm. yeah, in Gascon, and I had uh, 50 knots in this front at, at top uh, wind speed. And so that was the reason, I think, because uh, that was the reason for a lot of people why they couldn't get another front because the boat were already damaged from them. But um, for me, I had no problems in the first front and I thought, okay, the next one will be n less strong than the, the first one, so I shouldn't repass it. And I was fine, the boat was fine and all right. I, I was a bit worried when, we, when I entered uh, the harbor and made the stopover. Of course, I had like option to check internet and I saw like kind of shitstorm coming up <laughs> so maybe worse than the front itself uh, saying that it's um, non mini spirit like to continue sailing when all others go into the harbor and um, as, as we talked about already uh, I think the mini spirit is not about like racing and when to go in and out the harbor for safety reason but mini spirit for me is like uh, having barbecue together, having helping each other out at sea when there's something wrong, and, and uh, providing information. And uh, but mini spirit basically ends for me when it comes to your personal decision to continue racing or no. So I know. And I, it's for I everybody do. different because of the state of the boat, of the personal. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. There's so many uh, factors which is which which goes to a uh, decision in the end. And yeah. so I, I don't think we are anti, anti mini spirit, but <laughs> no, no, it was no. just maybe a bit of luck that we <laughs> take the decision a bit later than the others, but uh, immediately going to harbor was like no option for us. But I think it's very important uh, when you're at sea and uh, there is a front uh, approaching, uh, you have the information that you have. So uh, based on the information, you uh, as a skipper are the one who has to take a decision. And you take the decision based on your experience, based on your knowledge, based on uh, the information that, uh, that you have. And in this case, uh, you have the information with the weather forecast. Uh, but also, uh, I think it was very clear that uh, uh, the risky area around Cap Finisterre, there is a kind of limited area uh, where the, you get the big waves are reflected from uh, from the shore they're coming out they meet and become some something really disastrous like it could well be eight nine meters uh, and in that area but that if you in your preparations you should know about where is this and if you are uh, behind Finisterre you can make the choice to go outside of the traffic separation zone uh, or if you're in it, you can uh, make sure you get out of it uh, further south. And of course, uh, you also have the option to sail into the TSS. If shit really happens, you will get the penalty. But uh, uh, I think it's, um, it's a very important to, uh, to acknowledge that each skipper, they make their own choice. They make the decision and uh, maybe uh, later on they will make another dis decision and they will regret that they made what they, they did. But uh, still, in the situation, you make the decision that you make, and, uh, and, and that's uh, what you felt was right at that moment. And I, I think each decision uh, to go to harbor or not to go is uh, equally um, uh, respectful and uh, equally right for uh, each individual skipper. And race is uh, a race. If you decide to continue, it's, it's good, brave decision. We are very proud of you. <laughs> very <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> Ah, but it's, uh, I think uh, being in that position, you really did uh, the right uh, choice, and uh, you too. And you had a, you also got a golden opportunity to to get a bit power in your batteries again. <laughs> so uh, it was very reasonable uh, decisions, and I I think it's um, uh, go to harbor or not, it's it's really part of uh, of the game because. Uh, we are uh, all supposed to, to know how to handle the front. And uh, one part is to not be in the wrong place. And the uh, second is, uh, what is the angle that works for you? Uh, you said 55, 60 degrees, you found was a good angle uh, to the waves and to the wind. And uh, I would agree, it's, uh, if you go too, too tight to the wind, uh, it will be a disaster. You kind of dropping at the backside of the waves. If you are going on a, on a reach, you, you easily being, uh, uh, knocked down. Actually, I've been knocked down, been reaching in these conditions. So uh, you have to find uh, the good angle of, of the boat, and uh, once you find it, uh, 
yeah, you just have to sit there and take the shit until it's over. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is what we have to say about the situation. <laughs> and, uh, thank you for your opinions and uh, thank you for sharing your experience. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah. Thank you very much. See you soon. Uh, see you. <laughs> yeah.